Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessie and today I'm doing a book review over A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. Um, so I've never done a verbal book review before, so we'll see how this goes um, and just see if it turns out well and see how organized I stay. But um, before we get started, I will go and tell you how this is going to go. So I'm going to rate the book. I'm going to um, tell you the background. I'm going to tell you what I loved and tell you the one thing I'm not sure about. Um, and I'll try to do all that without spoiling the book but we'll have to wait and see um but if there are any spoilers i will put like a little spoiler word at the bottom that way um you can see if it's there and i'll leave the spoiler up from like right before the spoiler starts until it ends that way if you want to skip ahead you can but anyways this book i rated it four out of five stars on goodreads i probably would have rated it closer to um four and a half four point seven five stars if those have been options um but those were not options on Goodreads. Uh, give me one second, I need to let my cat in. Okay, all right, I'm back. Uh, Wilson apparently wanted in here and she probably just sat outside the word meow the whole time if I didn't let her in here. So anyways, like I said, I read the book four stars. A Song Below Water takes place in like pretty much an alternate universe, Portland, Oregon, where like it's our world with our social issues and all of our like, everything is like so similar to ours, except the only difference is the magical creatures also exist. And there's several magical creatures that are mentioned in the book, which are El, El Locos, Sprites, um, gar Gargoyles, uh, Sirens, and Gorgons are mentioned a little bit at the end. So, um, they're all mentioned and they kind of have like a hierarchy where El Locos are at the top and that's because like they can be any race, sex, or gender and like they are super charming and, um, and like just super charming and they also have like magical voices but like they're not magical in that like they can control what you do it's just the music that comes from them i guess is super magical and um they have like little charms that help them like i guess let their magical voices go i don't fully understand el loco so i'm not gonna lie about that um so like i don't fully understand why they're at the top other than the fact that they're um they can be any race gender or sex whereas um Sirens are at the bottom. The other ones I don't know as much about like where they fall in the middle, but um, sirens are at the bottom and they're essentially mermaids kind of, but also their voices are powerful. Their voices, um, they, I know three of the commands they can make you do is compel, they can tell you to do something, they can appeal to you, I can't remember exactly what that one is, and then they can awaken you. So like if you're magical, they can like cause you to use your magic. Um, so that's, that's like what their powers are. But the biggest thing, like part, the biggest reason that um, sirens are prejudiced against is because they are, first of all, they, their actual magic people fear. They fear like the power in their voices. But also uh, sirens are only black women. So um, they've got like, you know, their actual magic is prejudiced against, but so is um, their race. And they also face racial and um, misogynistic prejudices so um sirens kind of get like the sucky end and um it's all for stuff that they can't control they can't control being born black being born of the female sex and being born of being born a siren none of those are things that they can actually control they just happen to them they uh, so like that's kind of why um tavia she is one of the she's like the first main character that's why she's a siren and she struggles with that a lot she really wants to get rid of her voice and um like she really wants to be rid of her siren voice she just wants to be a normal human and not have to deal with like the prejudice that would come out and the fear especially because like her father brings so much fear into her life because he's so worried that like once people find out she's a siren um like they will harm her and like he kind of pushes her fe his fear onto tavia and so like she has all this fear and like um but also confusion because like her siren voice is always like not always but her siren voice wants to escape so much sometimes um and she wants to be like proud of who she is but also it's really hard to especially when part of her identity or it really is hard whenever so much of her identity is prejudiced against in some way and that's like her biggest struggle especially the first half of the book she really wants to find her grandmother's voice who she's never met she's never met her grandmother her grandmother died before they ever met and um but her grandmother was a siren and um she believes that if she can find her grandmother's voice in the water somewhere that maybe her grandmother can tell her how to get rid of her siren voice and how to just be normal so 
that's Tavia's big thing she kind of has going on that she's struggling with to move on from and to or to like embrace throughout the book and then um Effie her issues are a little bit different um Effie she has um her mom died when she was young and her mom I think she had cancer or some other illness and she died um so she struggled with that because she didn't know a ton about her mom she, whenever her mom died she was too young to know everything she wanted to know about her mom and then her mom would never tell her who her dad was and so like, that creates another issue because like no one will tell her who her dad is or anything about him and then there was this incident where she was like nine maybe where um she was at a park playing with her friends and um she believes that sprites turned her friends into stone in the middle of the game but somehow spared her so that leads her to believe that oh maybe her biological father is somehow part sprite or was full sprite or something um, even though from what I can tell or what I remember in the books, I don't think sprites were ever like embodied. So um, I'm not sure, I may have missed that. If I did, I'm sorry. But um, from what I can tell, I don't think sprites were ever embodied. So I'm not sure how he would have been the father in that case. But so she's led to believe that. And then also um, she's, so like her escape is that for two weeks every year, she participates in the Renaissance Fair where she plays a mermaid who is in love with like some other guy who plays in the fair. And so um, she is in no way a mermaid or a siren but it's acceptable because she's playing the part for the fair and so she really likes to swim and um, she's really drawn to water in a similar way to um tavia and like you kind of might think of times that she's going to be a mermaid because um she hears voices like what tavia is going to hear and at one point i was so scared that like you know what if tavia turned out to not really be a siren but she's got the voice so like what's going on with that whereas and then effie's like hearing voices that tavia's been trying to hear and she's not necessarily hearing voices specifically but she's hearing sounds that you would think Tavia might be hearing but um it's so, like Effie's struggling with that and then she's also struggling with like just really dry skin her skin and her scalp are just so dry all the time and she's tried so many things to fix them and um and then all of a sudden like uh, throughout the book she starts having blackouts and her skin just starts peeling and um like people around her just like keep turning to stone but they're not always people turning to stone when she's around so like all of a sudden people around her just start turning to stone but she's not around all of them when they're turning to stone so it's kind of confusing and a little bit different like you don't know what's going on and so like when you finally find out what happened like what's going on with Effie at the end it's really interesting and it's really nice and it was like kind of fun throughout the book to put the clues together and kind of figure out what was going on but that's kind of the background they call themselves pretend sisters where um like they both live together with Tavia's parents and um I forget the exact reason like the girls thought for why they became pretend sisters but the real reason was because um, Effie's family or adopted family had sent her to live with Tavia and her parents to kind of keep her safe because whatever is looking for Effie um, is apparently afraid of sirens. But you don't find that out until towards the end. But I don't think that's a huge, huge spoiler. They're both important. It's just Effie has a little bit more going on at this current time, maybe. And then during all of this, there's also a siren trial going on. But it's not really a siren trial. It's like the trial of someone who murders siren or a supposed siren. So this man, so there was this woman called Rhoda Taylor and she was murdered by a boyfriend. And, um, it like all evidence points to him being guilty but all of a sudden it gets brought up that hey she might have been a siren not that she is but that she might be and they can't really prove it because like you can't necessarily disprove you're a siren you can only prove that you are one so like um she's dead no one in her family comes forward to say yes or no because if they say yes like if they, well first if they say no i'm sure they'll be accused of lying but if they say yes then um that kind of like puts the whole family um, into like the public eye and scrutiny because if there was one siren there could be another but her her kill her murder gets let off solely because she might have been a siren and that was enough and that kind of that really affects Tavia throughout the book because she's following the trial her dad doesn't want her to in case like her internet search history is ever checked like what if the wrong person finds out she's following it so closely what if they somehow link that to her being a siren and like this whole trial really affects Tavia because she's a siren she knows that like if she would ever get accused of something or if she was even accused of being a siren she couldn't disprove it and so like um that would affect her and then they talk about like siren trials in the 1960s during the um civil rights movement and that kind of reminds me of like a combination of the salem witch trials and um the red scare and i remember like we read the crucible in high school and then after we read the crucible we kind of also talked about the salem witch trials in my english class if i remember correctly so basically like you know similarly to like those two things um people who are accused of being sirens they couldn't disprove being sirens 
And because they couldn't disprove it, that was just enough, whoever was investigating them, to say, well, you're a siren. I can't prove it, but you also can't disprove it, so that's enough which is really awful. That's going on in the background. That's also constantly playing into Tavia's mind. She like, cause like there's not a lot, there's not really a lot of positive representation of sirens and positive in the way that's empowering because there is also the show called Lexi on a Leash, which is about this one black woman named Lexi who is also a siren and she wears a siren collar that like blocks out her call and she has a reality TV show. And it's crazy because like, that's what everyone thinks a good siren should be like because um, apparently She's like, well, I won't use my powers, even though all the other magical creatures can use their powers. Um, she wears a collar and does what, what she supposedly should. And like the show is Lexi on a Leash, that was crazy to me. I see why Bethany C. Morrow would, um, would like make the show titled that because it really draws attention to like just how poorly represented and treated uh, sirens are. And then um, that's like one of, I believe that's just one of the many fears that Tavia has. And then also, uh, apparently, I think she said at the beginning of the book somewhere that um, sirens, sirens don't live as long once they're discovered to be sirens. They don't have as long of a lifespan. So that was really sad as well. So I, th I think that's all the background. If I have more, I'll add it throughout. I guess now we're on to like things I liked about the book. The first thing I really, really liked was the social commentary. Um, a lot of the social commentary was about like race, um, like racial prejudice and maybe a little bit of misogynistic prejudice as well, which that's what it also says on the inside flap. But there was so much of that. Throughout this book, uh, the orange tabs are, um, are like um, racial commentary that I like highlight and like made notes of and thought was really important as I was reading. And um, there's like one or two pink tabs at the end because I ran out of orange ones. I'm kind of curious about when Bethany C. Morrow first started writing this book because like, so this book has a lot of commentary about like how um, black women are treated, especially black women who are sirens in this particular universe are treated. And like, but it also just talks about um, black people and their treatment in general. And there's also um, like Black Lives Matters is included in this book as well. And I believe A Song Below Water was actually released last month in June, which as most of you know, that's whenever um, Black Lives Matters protests started for George Floyd after he was murdered and um, attention was brought like more attention was given to Breonna Taylor's case um, and trying, I think people are still trying to have her, the police who murdered her arrested and charged. And then um, Elijah McClain, he was a black boy or a black man. I think he was about my age, 23, walking home from a store in Colorado. And I think his case was recently opened back up. So like just whenever this book was actually re released, which I know there's no way that, um, a Bethany C. Morrow or the publishing company would have known like ahead like whenever they first started getting like when she first started writing the book and whenever the company first started like I guess helping her get the book ready for publishing and um, they would have known what was what would be happening when the book was released but um I think that this book is like really important right now and let me say like let me correct myself because like it's really important right now because of what's specifically going on and like helping to continue like conversations about um how black people are treated in society. But also it's just like so, um, like when it was released, it's just so um, crazy with how much like it has to do with what's actually happening in real life at this point in time. I think it's really important in that, even though it's a fictional book and it's a fictional world with some fantasy in it, I still think it's really important um, because of the way it talks about race. So like there's also the inclusion of microaggressions, like when you're talking about like, the racial prejudice that's included in this book. So like one day Effie is at the community center poll and a bunch of people from Tavia's network, which is essentially that the network is just there to pr help protect Tavia's siren identity. And I think it's supposed to be like also a support group for Tavia to go to as well when things are stressful. The network comes there and um, there's this girl named Naima and another girl named Jamie. Jamie's white and Naima is black. I think her name's pronounced Naima. Jamie asked Effie like, you know, is all your hair real? And just kind of like, why would you ask someone that's none of your business? one way or another, but like you wouldn't probably, she probably wouldn't have asked, you know, one of her white friends if her hair was real. And Naima, call, Naima calls Jamie Allen that like, hey, don't say that, it's stupid. Um, even though she doesn't necessarily like um, Effie or um, Tavia. So like, I like that that was included. And there's other things throughout the book as well. But a lot of it has to do with like, especially how sirens are treated. Or like, um, at one point Tavia gets pulled over while driving and she wasn't speeding. She wasn't, like her tags were all good. But she got pulled over just for being a black woman driving and a potential siren, I guess. And um, she acts, or not really accidentally, but she uses one of her um, powers on one of the police officers to like get him to let her go. 
but the police officer who saw her do it was um the dad of like an ex-boyfriend or like a boy that she was really interested in a few months ago and that kind of creates a lot of tension and like fear in her but he thankfully is like more interested in like not revealing her identity to everyone but he does like go to her parents and like say hey um I'm not gonna tell anyone, but maybe like see if she'll wear a collar, like that kind of thing. So like he isn't necessarily a good person either. He still pulled her over for no real reason. But the very least he did was like, you know, not tell anyone about her identity. And so like there's like a lot of fear in that as well. Um, there's more about the racial prejudice. It's just like trying to describe it really well. At one point after like the trial for Rhoda Taylor's murder, um, a, an influencer that uh, um, Tavia really likes reveals herself as a siren and says she's going to like this, going to a Black Lives Matter protest where a um like a high school boy had been murdered by police and i forgot the reason in the book but he was a black high school boy doing essentially nothing and he'd been murdered by the police and so um the girl who wrote who um who tavia really liked as an influencer was going and that's not exact exactly what made tavia go but it's just kind of like helped her and then i'm um, sorry i've got like one of her ones i guess she ended up somehow like coming to be more terms with her siren identity like she finds a way to become come more to terms with it and that also helps her like go to the um protest and then at the protest like the police officers are already in riot gear which we see in like real life that real life protests that are going to be peaceful and would be peaceful without that added addition or without people coming to stir things up but so like the like on top of wearing riot gear the uh police officers are already wearing anti-siren headphones or earplugs or whatever to, so, like, to make sure that even though uh, most sirens there probably wouldn't use their power against them um they're still anticipating it and getting ready for no real reason and then at the end of the protest whenever things go badly because um Ca the camilla the influencer who revealed herself to be a siren steps up to speak and she apparently saw as the police and like people who are not sirens and do not sympathize with sirens are concerned um that she shouldn't have done that that was that made her bad and they end up jamming a collar around her neck an anti-siren collar around her neck so like that's just some of like the racial prejudice that um goes into this and it's like but like the way it's depicted i think it's like really good for sparking conversation and also a few more days weeks months whenever like the black lives matter um stopped trending like it is now i think it'll still help spark conversation um and kind of help keep people's minds on it I like it especially because like it's a young adult book and it's directed for younger ages and then uh so the next thing i really liked about the book was uh, um effie and topic tavia's friendship or of all the books that i've read lately um there's like the friendship and then there's like um romance and the romance tends to be more important than the friendship but like the way this book was set up i loved it so much because um like Tavia and Effie seemed like they were equally main characters. It wasn't like where it went to one of them more than the other. So like they're equally main characters and they also like they're together and they're like living as pretend sisters and stuff. But they also um, respect each other's boundaries and like they're both going through their own things separately. And they know when to not tell the other person about their own personal um, struggles because they know that they're that the other girl is struggling and they know that they don't need to burden each other. So like I like how they know each other so well and how much thought was like put into their friendship. Uh, for example, whenever like everything happens that causes Tavia to like kind of accept her siren identity, she take she doesn't immediately tell Effie because this is around the time that Effie starts having the skin peeling and the blackouts. And while um, ta ta Effie hasn't necessarily told Tavia about that stuff, um, Tavia knows like not to tell Effie, like right now at least, about her um, about her own struggles because it might just be too much. They both have their own things they need to work on. And I really like that. I like the way that like, it wasn't necessarily that it was two separate stories, but they both had two pretty different like, ish like struggles going on that they were dealing with. But I like the way that they did that together but also without burdening each other. I don't know how to describe it very well. Their relationship was really good. I love that they didn't have petty drama. Like, I don't think there were any fights between them in this book, because like, that's one thing that I think um, sometimes happens whenever you have like two best friend main characters like this. There's always at least like one small fight or some big fight, but like there's no like little drama in between them. Like they're always there for each other and I really like the way that was included. So I really loved their friendship and the way it was included. Like I, just, I love their relationship and their dynamic with each other and like just how much they were both equally the main character. They were both equally the protagonist and they were both equally working on everything that they had to deal with and like trying to figure everything out with their life that they wanted to figure out. And then the third and final thing that I really loved about this book, besides just the book itself, was um there was, I wouldn't say that there's heavy mental mental health representation, 
but there is mental health representation a little bit in this book and I like the way it's included because obviously this book is not a mental health book it's like a fantasy with social commentary is how I think would be like one of the best ways to describe it. Like the social commentary plays a huge part throughout the whole book, but there is a little bit of um, mental health um, thrown into it. So for example, Tavia, she's like struggled her whole life with being a, um, like with being a siren. And so like Tavia, she struggled her whole life with being a siren. It's like an identity her dad can't accept because he worries for her life and her safety and her quality of life if she were um, to ever have her siren identity revealed. And he worries about so much that he pushes his fear onto her. And so this is a trigger warning, but um, in the book, whenever she was 11, she tried to strangle herself. And so like, it's never clear like on if she was purposefully attempting to actually kill herself. Um, because so I know kids tend to like learn about death and realize it's permanence and everything around the age of 10, give or take a little bit. But I don't know whenever kids like kind of really start to understand and know what suicide is. And so like in the book, she never explicitly said that when she was 11, she was trying to kill herself. And so like when she was 11, she just realized, you know, like her voice, like her throat always burned from her siren voice trying to escape. So she uh, like, she tried to strangle herself with a belt on her bed and um, to like, just get rid of the voice, get rid of the voice. And then it would make her life and everyone else's easier. And so um, she ended up passing out from it. And after her attempt, her parents find her passed out and they take her to the hospital. And their two choices are, they can admit that she's a siren and she tried to get rid of her voice, or they can lie and say she attempted to commit suicide and therefore that like kind of saves her siren identity. I'm not sure like how well like um, after her suicide, her supposed suicide attempt, um, like her mental health was like treated by her family and stuff, but her parents did at least move from like where they were living in California to Portland, Oregon, because Portland, Oregon did have a um, network that would like have a support system for her. So they did at least do that to help her. And um, she is obviously like super anxious all the time. Like you can feel it like in your chest, like any, like, or I could feel it like anytime I was reading the book and she thought she was about to get caught. Like I could feel the um, tension and anxiety building in my neck and my shoulders and my chest and just um, like that. And then Effie, she, uh, like due to her childhood, her mom died as a child, that's considered a, considered a childhood dra trauma, I believe. And then she also had the issue where like, she was the only survivor of all of her friends suddenly being turned into stone. So I'm sure that brings a lot of stuff to deal with as well. And so like, you, she kind of like, throughout the book, it'll kind of talk about her experience like with um, seeing a counselor or a psychologist. She talks about like, her experiences with him and like, so does Tavia. Tavia talks about Effie's experiences with him because Tavia, like they're close enough that, um, and this goes back to their relationship, Tavia's close enough to like kind of know that um, Effie saw a counselor and to like kind of, like based off what she remembers from whenever Effie saw a counselor, remember like what, kind of helped Effie when she was having a hard time and when didn't. Effie also seems to like definitely struggle with anxiety and stuff. So like I like the way the mental health was included. Like it wasn't like the biggest factor, but it was included enough to like normalize mental health for um other people who may not have it normalized in their life. So I really liked that. Just overall I really really loved this book. I will say like the ending, I'm not sure how I felt about it because like Effie um, she's struggling because she doesn't know like parts of her identity. She also doesn't know why she's suddenly having blackouts and like um, people are turning to stone. She like, she's really struggling with it. And at the end you kind of find out why uh, Mama Theo and um, Effie's Papa wanted her to go live with um, Tavia and her family. And like I'm not sure if I liked that part. It's just, I don't know what it is about it, but it just felt like, it just like it was so random. And I'm sure it wasn't because like, you know, Effie was looking for these answers all along and she got them. It's just the way it happened. I'm not sure what I think about it, but I am very glad with the ending. I'm glad that Effie kind of like gets her answers and she gets to move on and figure out what to do next. And Tavia wants to like move on and help other girls who are sirens and black women and kind of help them come to terms with their identity and also help just like get them what they deserve as far as like social standing and treatment and stuff. Like I know one thing she wanted to do was get um, Lexi on a leash taken off the air because that's just, that's so like dehumanizing. So yeah, like I said, I love this book. Um, I definitely think if you get a chance to read it, you should, if your local library gets it, if you were able to borrow it from a friend, if you were able to um, purchase it yourself or if it's on Scribd or something, I would definitely recommend you read this book. I think it was so amazing. Um, so like, like I said, um, an actual story is like a fantasy story about two um, high school girls who are like trying to find answers to their own lives 
but like just the social commentary alone was so amazing like I think it was oh sorry let me touch your face um like the social commentary alone was just so amazing the way I think it was handled and so anyways I will say that like as far as I can tell the social commentary is amazing but I'm saying that as a white woman with my own experiences that are never gonna be like um like a like a black person or someone of another race because I'm white I get the um white privilege that comes with that but as far as I can tell I think this is an amazing book um I really love this book and I highly recommend you read it if you can but anyways thank you guys so much for watching if you've read A Swung Below Water please let me know what you think and then if you have any like different opinions than mine or um like think I missed anything please feel free to leave them in the comments below um I like I said I love this book it's probably another one that I'm gonna have to add to my favorites of the year but anyways thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later